Crossroads Media. What is going on, everyone? We're talking about the Philly series win against the Marlins today. Before we dive into the action, though, a couple things. If you are new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. We are very close to 18,000 subscribers. I can't stress it enough. You are all so amazing. I love you all so much with all my heart. The fact that you listen every day, me breaking down Philly sports, you are all amazing. So if you're new, smash that subscribe button. Also, we are extremely close to 6,000 followers on Twitter. At Broads81 is my personal account. So if you want to get highly entertaining tweets throughout games, highly entertaining tweets when there's no games, and great tweets 99.9% .9 of the time, I guess I'll just throw that point 1% in there for the times where, you know, sometimes you throw a joke out there that doesn't land. Comedians don't bat a thousand. Anyway, make sure you smash the the follow button over there on Twitter. And with that being said, well, there is TikTok as well, Broads Media. Great content there as well. But anyway, moral of the story. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the show. What is going on, everyone? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. What did I say after that doubleheader when the Phillies lost game two? I said, let's wait. Let's wait and see what ends up happening. If they won the next two games with Vince Velasquez and Zach Wheeler on the mound, we look at that second game of the doubleheader with a totally different mindset. And here we go. Another series victory. All they do right now is win series. And it's phenomenal to watch. And I'm very intrigued to see how they continue to grow as a unit with a ton of confidence and what Dave Dombrowski does at the trade deadline now that basically this team has told Dave, we're doing it. You're doing it. You're picking up the phone. You're going to add. Right now, the Mets, they lost Jacob DeGrom. They lost Francisco Lindor. Their bullpen, as of late, has been an absolute disaster. And their offensive numbers are in the bottom half of the league. Every statistic offensively. Batting average, OPS, slugging percentage. You can go down the list. 25 of 30. 23 of 30. They are not great in the offensive production. Now they lose a robot in DeGrom. And, you know, Francisco Lindor is a key piece to their team as well. Now, granted, they fought back hard against a horrendous Pittsburgh Pirates team. But if you did not see the clip, here's Walker on the bump. Throws a fair ball basically to no man's land. Three run score. It was ridiculous to see that go down. I bring this all up to you though because when you think about the Mets, they are the Mets. And there's no way that you can feel so extremely comfortable that they're going to complete the job down the stretch where a couple games over 500 in this division is going to keep you upbeat. It's going to keep you involved. And the Phillies are right there. It's crazy to say they got to head to New York for a quick two games, a quick how do you do, and then they're back in action in South Philadelphia against some teams in their own division. So I'm proud of them for fighting. JT Real Muto has clicked on all cylinders, and not just offensively. He's been magnificent defensively as well, gunning guys out at second, ba second base. We arguably saw the best throw in quite some time out of him from behind the dish. So JT has woken up big time. Starts the day off with a walk-off bomb. 0-2 count to finish yesterday's game, which was just absolutely bizarre. The Marlins, so many questions with the man on third base, knowing you need a double play. Wide pitch to JT Real Muto there. By the way, he can do some damage with high cheese. You know he needs to just get a sacrifice fly. That's why he did the fist pump afterwards. He even claimed he didn't necessarily know if it was going to go out of the yard or not. But just the fact that you're going up and high in the zone. Oh, to someone who can do damage with that pitch. Someone who can historically be able to do something with that. You know, driving it out to right field that deep or right center field is going to accomplish the goal for the Phillies. So, bizarre, no doubt. 
Get a double play ball. Walk them on purpose. Load the bases. Do whatever you need to do if you're the Marlins. I just thought that was an asinine decision. But that's one of the reasons why the Marlins are where they are to begin with. Because they're not the sharpest in the world. The game one, though. Well, I I call it game one of today. Even though they only played half of a... Well, they played a full inning, right? They played the 10th inning. It should have never been to that point. There's no denying it. So many chances with men in scoring position. Guys get to third base. Less than two outs. Can't move anybody over. And you figured when it's 2 nothing early in that game and you constantly are filling the bases, you're constantly getting traffic where you need to and you're not finishing the job. You're not getting that timely hit. And it happens over and over and over again, eventually it's going to bite you in the ass. Eventually the other team is going to make you pay, and that's exactly what happened when Ranger Suarez was trying to complete the game as your closer. Here you go, here goes Aguilar, bomb! And it's tied 2-2. First off, there was a leadoff single by Marte as well, so you know you kind of had a bad feeling for Ranger Suarez in that moment. I got to tip my cap to Vinny V. He did his job five innings. They were scoreless innings, so Vince Velasquez, you know, bounced back. But here's a fascinating stat about Vinny V against the Marlins compared to everybody else, which is a telling sign. 18 scoreless innings versus Miami. 43 earned runs in 59 and a third innings and a 6.52 ERA versus everybody else. So when the talent is lesser and when there's not a lot of power on the other side, Vince Velasquez can be fine and be okay. And that's actually something I mentioned after the doubleheader. I I I talked about how, you know, any other team in the world and Vince Velasquez on the bump, I probably don't feel as strong. But can you get by in one game against Miami? Absolutely. Even though Aguilar ended up taking Suarez deep and made it tighter than it needed to be and forced the Phillies to play an inning in the in the Sunday afternoon tilt, you know, with Vinny V, you know, he did what he needed to. By the way, that pitch was an 0-1 changeup. You just knew. You knew the second it happened. Ah, damn it. And look, to me, closures will blow games. It's never about that one moment where the game is blown. It's about what's next. Because, look, we are searching for an answer. We don't know who's going to close night in and night out. But Ranger Suarez somewhat walked into that role and was okay, and now has somewhat grabbed it. So he blew a big moment. What's next? If he shuts the door the next three attempts, the next four attempts, we feel fine. It's similar to, to kind of tie it back to this specific series, how do the Phillies face adversity after losing game two of the doubleheader? They respond with two wins. That's fine. That's what we needed to see. How is Ranger Suarez going to now go on the bump for his next outing? Is he blowing another save? Or is he bang, 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 one, two, three, and the Phillies are cruising to a victory with a couple run lead and there's no damage done whatsoever and we're not sweating it out? That's the question that I'm waiting to get answered. But Hector Neris did great. Archie Bradley did great in that in that game three, if you will. Three shutdown innings. Alvarado in the 10th. We can't forget about that. He comes back in that 10th inning. One, two, three. Man on second base. You're in a weird spot. What the hell is going on? That was awkward. I'm not going to lie. Watching that 10th inning, it was uh, almost as if, what's going on here? (laughs) Right? What's happening? It's the 10th inning. They're trying to secure a win. Just bonkers, really. They don't ask how. They ask how many. And that's adversity that you hit as a team. You know, it's a weird spot. It's the next day. We've seen that here before in Philadelphia, may I add. But, you know, you just think about being a team and knowing you had that game in your hands. You had so many chances up the bat. You know, you were at the plate. You could have cruised to an easy win with just a couple timely hits. But instead, it's tied 2-2, and now you're forced to play a weird inning the next day. That's not easy, and you have to dig deep, and you have to come together as a clubhouse and, and, and as brotherhood. And a big thing, too, that I think is important to note 
It didn't take 15 innings. It didn't take 14 innings. Do what you need to do. Move the runner over, which seems to be a pretty common theme here with this baseball team as of late. Place a bunt down. Get guys over. I'm watching players all throughout this organization right now. Place down a bunt. Play in small ball. And before you know it, they're, they're securing wins and getting victories. Now, I, I keep going through this whole small ball thing. Well, they got lucky. Well, this and that and singles and bunts. No, 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 no. They're winning baseball games. It's not luck. It's a way to play the game. Singles matter. Bunts matter. Broken bat singles matter. They all matter. They're winning baseball games. Now, there's a teeny tiny bit of me that wonders this. And I don't know if I'm going too far. I'm willing to admit that I don't know if this is necessarily 1,000% a reason why, but it has to at least be mentioned. Alec Bohm is not playing third base. Alec Bohm has had a problem defending over at third base. Ronald Torres is playing third. He's got a good glove. He's good at defending. You're winning baseball games without Alec Bohm, who was a disaster at third base. Now, I had Bob Wankel of Crossing Broad on 97.5 The Fanatic tonight as uh, as a guest. And we brought that up. And he said, you know, maybe first base, maybe left field. And I'm like, oh, no. I just had PTSD of Reese Hoskins. And I don't want to go 2.0 of Alec Boehm. You know, Reese Hoskins 2.0 with Alec Boehm out in left field one day. He's just horrible in that area. And I just wonder, you know, how much sharper does this team look when they are playing fantastic baseball defensively? You know, like they play such a better brand of ball when they have less errors on the field. Crazy how that works. Everyone wants to scream bullpen, bullpen, bullpen. I'm willing to talk about the bullpen. I'm willing to talk about a Kimbrel or a Rodriguez or anybody else available at the trade deadline to help this baseball team get better in that area. It's clear and obvious they need to do that. Just as bad as the bullpen is, your defense, your defense, your defense. It's just as much of an issue. And I'm seeing them clean things up in the field, and I'm seeing more wins on the diamond. You know, it's it's just something to look at. That's all. By the way, Harper uh, starts the run scoring in that game three win early on. You take a 2 nothing lead. That's monstrous. Started by Reese Hoskins. Uh, started by Bryce Harper, excuse me. Reese Hoskins then delivered. Andrew McCutcheon then delivered. Starts with Bryce Harper. Watching him run the bases is one of my favorite things to do. When they show the camera over at third base and he's rounding second and he's going to third and he's even running home. It's just an amazing adrenaline rush for me to see Bryce Harper when he's putting in the work and he's running the bases. It's just a beautiful sight, you know, just a beautiful sight. All right, so on the on the game, I, I'm messing up all these game titles because I say game two as if they actually played a doubleheader today as well. Game four of the series, they went seven to four. This is the original game, the, the game that was supposed to happen on Sunday. They went seven to four. They faced a little bit of, you know, a tough time. You you had the lead, you lose the lead. Zach Wheeler has a really horrible inning. And it's out of character for him. And they lost the lead as soon as they gained the lead. That's unacceptable. It can't happen. They still grinded. McCutcheon, Didi Gregorius, solo home runs. Jankowski, Brad Miller, pinch hits. Joe Girardi has been a hot item here in this city. And I think underwhelming is the word that is easily thrown around town. And that's fair. If you base it off of what he has given you all season long, it's now out it's not outrageous to claim that Joe Girardi has made boneheaded decisions. Joe Girardi has seemed to go off script. Joe Girardi has put this team in really uncomfortable spots and sometimes spots to fail. So it's not like it's egregious to think Joe Girardi hasn't been the perfect X and O strategic individual that you expected when you heard the name Joe Girardi come to town after Gabe Kapler. But what I saw at the Fenway series, remember, Aaron Nola, COVID list. 
Brandon Kinsler becomes your opener. You have no idea, and, and Aaron Nola wasn't the only one, but he was supposed to be the starting pitcher on that last day before the All-Star break started. You're in Fenway. You win that game to win the series. Joe Girardi pushed all the right buttons. Then there was the three-home run game by Brad Miller when I'm questioning, why are you taking Reese Hoskins out? Why are you taking Andrew McCutcheon out? Why are you taking your hottest hitters out of the lineup? I believe this was the last game against the Cubs, or was it the last game that was a four-game series? I don't remember exactly what game it was in that Cubs series, but why are you taking your hottest hitters out of the lineup to throw Brad Miller in there, even though it's a righty on the mound? Andrew McCutcheon, at the time, had eight home runs against righties. Now, his batting average, significantly different, sub-200 against righties, while against lefties, about 300, but Reese Hoskins, 12 of his 20 homers at the time were against righties. What were they doing? Brad Miller hit three home runs that night, and that was a a, a big moment, and that was a huge momentum swing and a big confidence build for the team. Joe Girardi pushed the right buttons. When you see Jankowski, when you see Brad Miller both get pinch hit opportunities and they end up resulting in Runs, at the time it was 4-4. Segura gets a sack fly. Andrew McCutcheon is running hard down the first baseline. You end up scoring. You end up getting two runs. Big, crucial, huge runs to give yourself a two-run lead. Then Jankowski bunts, steal, sack bunt. JT Real Muto ends up getting an RBI. Now you're up 7-4. We know how important insurance is. No doubt. You need insurance. Because... The game before, you lost the damn lead late and was forced to go into extras the following day because you weren't able to capitalize with the insurance. Joe Girardi, buttons pushed. All right, so Brogdon gets in trouble in the eighth. Here comes Falter. Are you kidding me? Falter, big strikeout. Game-changing strikeout. What are we talking about here, baby? We're talking about the bullpen stepping up in a big moment and shutting the door. That was ridiculous. And let's not not give credit to Hector Neris, who, by the way, his last six appearances, smooth. Operated without allowing a run. Got his number called again. Completed the mission. And that was on the air at that time. And my producer, Tom, does a fantastic job. Uh, He was going back and forth with me a bit. I guaranteed Hector was going to be fine. I guarantee that there would be no hiccup. I guarantee that there would be no issue. Hector's had his struggles. Hector's also closed a lot of games. Easy. Smooth sailing. For Hector, the protector. Not Hector, the heart attack. No, 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 not tonight. It was Hector. The protector. No, Suarez. It was unfortunate, though. Uh, And, of course, Suarez has pitched as of late, so it was time to go in another direction on the night. It was interesting, though, or unfortunate, excuse me, unfortunate to see Jazz go down with that injury. He's one of the most exciting players in the league right now. He's ridiculous. He's fantastic. He's had some sloppy plays in the field over this series, but ultimately, you know, you tune into the Marlins and you see Jazz play High motor guy, high character guy, plays the game the right way. He's giving maximum effort on a blooper play out in right field. He leaves everything out there on the table. And as soon as you see his reaction and his facial expression with the shoulder, you knew that it looked really serious. And it just it always sucks when you see an individual go down playing the game the way that he plays. And it just sucked. You know, I'm, I'm really pulling for him to come back strong and to not skip a beat whenever he does come back. He, he's definitely one of my favorite players to watch. But yeah, just horrible. Just horrible to see. Phillies had a 2 nothing lead. They cashed in. This was very early in the game. They cashed in on a mistake. Good teams do that. Make them pay. Torreya scores on a pass ball. If they're going to play an ugly style, they're going to play a brand where they're going to give you t- some momentum, take it, especially early. We know how big getting a lead is early. We've watched this team, the Phillies team, lose because Didi allows a, an error to occur. What do you know? It's 3 nothing with a blink of an eye, and the other team rolls from there. It happened in Chicago. It's happened after Chicago. 
will now advantage Phillies. Pass ball, fine. Torreya scores. What's that? 2 nothing Phillies. Bada boom, bada bang. Now, Wheeler in the third, though. Bad baseball. Single, single, double. Sack fly. Two-run home run. Single. There was some good pop out of those hits as well. There was some good contact that was getting squared up. Also, you know, you're not even talking about the purest part of this lineup the, for its entirety, and let's not act as if this lineup is just filled with insane talent. Uh, my point is, you know, you, you you allow something to happen at the bottom of the lineup. It's like, yo, what are we doing here, Zach? You were just given the lead. Top dogs in the top of the rotation need to shut it down. And Zach Wheeler has been on another level. Zach Wheeler is one of the reasons why you're even in the position that you are in. No one's bashing Zach Wheeler to the point where he's awful. Just something to monitor, though. Zach Wheeler, his last start wasn't anything wild either. He got beat up a bit with some small ball, but he got beat up a bit. And now, well, he had a really tough inning. Just weird, out of character, something we normally don't see out of him. Another thing Bob Wankel mentioned uh, on, on the Fanatic tonight, and I think it's worth mentioning, is the fact that he has a lot of innings pitched to his name. And we were very, very upset that he only got those three pitches in the All-Star game. He went from be, possibly being able to start to getting three innings super, or three pitches, excuse me, super late and, and not really getting much run, which is just crazy considering the year that he's had. A lot of innings pitched. Is it time now to try and limit that? And my response, though, to Bob was, oh, yeah, I could only imagine this fan base when you see Joe Girardi walking out of the sixth inning, walking out in the fifth inning at 80-something pitches saying, hey, Zach, it's time for you to, to go back to the bench. And I think Bob makes a good point, though. Does every inning or does every outing have to be seven-plus innings with 110 pitches? Probably not, but your bullpen's not the strongest in the world either, and you still have to rack up a lot of victories, so you need to find the perfect balance here of limiting the amount of innings pitch. You're right, not every outing has to be 7 plus 110 pitches. You gotta find that good balance, though, because you can't just pass up victories. You can't piss away wins because, well, we gotta make sure Zach Wheeler is fine. You gotta get those wins as well because you're fighting with the New York Mets right now, and every win is so damn important. You're in a race. And you got to find a good mix. There's truth to what he's saying. At the same time, let's not go extremely overboard and, and blow this thing wide open. All right, let's get to DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook is not only my favorite sportsbook, but also America's top-rated sportsbook. I love using DraftKings Sportsbook. Easy to navigate, plenty of instructions for new betters, and nearly limitless ways to get in on all of the action. My friends and family have been loving DraftKings Sportsbook, and I know you will too. Listen to this great offer. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use promo code BRODES when you sign up for all of the fantastic odds boosts and promotions. That is promo code BRODES for fantastic odds boosts and promotions throughout the app. It's only for a limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only. Restrictions apply. In partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. So, we do have a lot of text messages today on the Phillies, and when the, the text messages come in, Hot and ready. I like to sometimes, you know, utilize them over some of the phone calls. If there's a good package of text messages. And I thought today there was a good bunch. So we're going to rock with the Anytime Hotline text. And, of course, the phone number 856-442-9805. You can utilize the Anytime Hotline anytime about anything. Phone calls, text messages, you name it. We'll start off with Chuck in South Philly. Are you starting to believe more, or do you still feel they will slope back downwards? I'm starting to feel better about them. One of the things I stated after the last game in Fenway before the All-Star break was, they just have to continue this after the break, and if they do... I will continue to believe and have more faith as the longevity is there. So keep doing that. I will get sucked in. 
keep playing that better brand of baseball, I will eventually say, this is reality. This is who they are. And maybe the injuries played a role in why they were not as good as they are now offensively. And, you know, guys are stepping up off of the bench. And when Jankowski's number's getting called, he's finishing the job. He had four RBIs the other day. Had a couple hits as well. Now he's putting bunts down. He's getting on base. He's running the bases better. Let's not forget about that disaster he had at second base, which put a lot of sour in our mouth. It made us feel very brutal and nauseous about the player that he is. And now he's pretty much put that behind him. And kudos to him. That's not easy to do. In this market, people are screaming to DFA him on the spot and kick him out of town. And since then, he's been nothing short of all awesome and become a very good story. You know, I just, I need to see it for a while. I need to see it for a normal period of time and not just 10 games. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll feel better. But of course, you, you win four series in a row, no matter who the team is, no matter what city it's in, no matter how that team is currently playing at the time, it's not easy to do. Also, a couple of those series were not three game sets. They were four game sets, so you're winning three of four. They're on a nice tear right now, and you know if they can, if, like the the Yankee series is awkward because it's two games. So a split against the Yankees on the road is not a horrendous thing, and it's not technically winning a series, but a two game set puts it in this weird spot. They go on and sweep them. I mean that would just be outrageously awesome. They're fun. They're exciting. I'm feeling better about them now than I did before the break because they came out of the jump and they continued. Let's see, though, what they do. Do they die out at any point? Is this really their offense? Is it going to be okay defensively? Is Alec Boehm going to get back in there and you you just get singles and you get small ball out of them? And, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. Is he going to have awful plays defensively that's going to factor into losing games? I don't know. I'm just asking questions. Aaron Nola. What version of Aaron Nola are you going to get? He's, he's fantastic in August, not great in September. Well, we're cruising into August here. It's July 18th, so of course there's still time in July. But we're cruising into an area where Aaron Nola does do well, and then he dips off dramatically in September. So how is that going to factor into what we see in this race? Martin, also from South Philly, texts in, JT Real Muto's last few games have been stellar. I agree. Including on the defensive side of the ball, he's been playing very well. He can help carry this team. I am shocked by the... Uh, by the play of JT as of late. Not that I don't think it's in him to go through stretches like this because there's a reason why he is valued the way that he is when the best catcher in baseball phrase is thrown out there. And I just think it's funny that, you know, the all-star game Homer has somewhat been maybe that eye-opening moment for him and that spark plug for him that he needed after the noise saying he doesn't deserve to be in that spot. And then when Buster Posey goes out, he gets... You know, that nod and all, and it's just good for him, definitely. And he's on a ride. He's on a ride. And this is probably what we expected out of him more times than not. And I don't know if that's been what it's been, but he can carry the team. The, the thing is, if DD's bringing power, which he's definitely helped in the power game for this team, if Bryce Harper is just playing the brand that Bryce Harper normally plays with the Reese Hoskins hot stretch, and they're giving you a double that can score you a run. And when he gets really going, you know, that's scary. That's really scary to have. Gene Segura has been steady. Andrew McCutcheon has brought that intensity since the start of June, and he's been cruising with OPS, and he's been helping out this team with power. You talk about the clunk of guys I just threw in that conversation, and that's scary. That's scary if you're an opposing pitcher. Pick your poison. Which guy do you really want to throw to? Because any of these players has been able to deliver, has been able to square up the baseball. And then you start talking about the Jankowskis, who's doing the little things, and the Tereuses, that's been doing the little things and giving you a 260 or so batting average, which has been, you know, a big improvement for this team when Didi Gregorius wasn't there. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a big, I, it's a big improvement. Uh, did that come out wrong? Uh, someone who to hold the fort. 
It's been great for him to be able to hold the fort for you to the point where you have to find ways to get him in the lineup. You know, it's it's massive for sure. He can help carry the team. I agree with that statement. He can help carry the team with other guys exploding, with the way Reese can play when he's hot, Bryce when he plays, you know, very, very, very solid baseball and, and good stretches. With Didi's power, you just throw that lump in there. Good luck. Good luck picking your poison. Jackson from Marlton, New Jersey. Dave Dombrowski is now in a position to buy. The team did their job. Make it tough for the front office and put them in a spot to now call teams. I can't wait to see what Dave Dombrowski does. Marte, name that's been thrown around. No-brainer. His number's in Citizens Bank Park. I did see them. I think I have to pull them up just for some context, of course. Let me pull up Marte's numbers in Citizens Bank Park. Park. It is, as I give this to you, 398 batting average, 451 OBP, 645 slugging with a 1.096 OPS. Marte would be fantastic. Are they going to go after other outfielders? Are they going to look in that direction? I guess it's possible. Who was it was the name that I saw the other day? Was it Buxton? Buxton was the name that I saw the other day. Lots of injuries, but when not injured, is it somebody that you can rely on to be a ridiculous piece, like a legitimate actual player that can scare teams as well? I talked about a bunch of these players as one, as a package in a lineup, and how lethal it can be. Add a player like Buxton in the mix, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about even... Uh, more serious. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but there are some concerns about the health and what he can provide from that aspect, but I'm so waiting for Dave Dombrowski to do something. There was, and I know I've referenced this maybe two or three times so far this episode, but, you know, it's where we are right now with this Phillies team, and I, I believe Bob does such a fantastic job covering the Phillies for Crossing Broad. And we touched on a lot of different topics. One of the biggest things that he did not like about the Matt Klintak era was lack of creativity with picking up pieces. Okay, Brandon Workman, that wasn't very creative. Dave Dombrowski, new era. And he has, has a, he's had a track record of being a bit more creative. Well, maybe there's something out there that we're not necessarily thinking of or, you know, a piece where it's like, okay, all right, let's see. And then it ends up being something more important than you would have anticipated prior to seeing the actual outcome. The Dave Dombrowski era. Will it be more creative than what the Matt Klintak and Andy McPhail era would be? And I would hope so, considering it wasn't very much. And there's really only one way up from here. So we'll see. But, you know, what is going to be the first legitimate move made by Dave Dombrowski? And lastly here that I'll bring up is Steve from Harrisburg, PA. Is this real life? Sure is fun. Nice and simple. To the point, though, you're right. It, it, it is nice and fun. This is a really nice stretch to see, and I want to continue to build off of it. You know, I'm, I'm almost pissed off that they have an off day on Monday. Where's the baseball? Give me more baseball. I just went, what, a week without it because of the All-Star break? It's time to bring it back already. No off days. Never an off day. Baseball, baseball, baseball. Throw everyone into the ground. Damn it, I need more baseball. But Steve is right. Sure is fun. And that's a perfect way to end things. So with that, thank you all so much for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time.